can see in two minutes. Hello, 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 everyone. Come on in. It's time. Come on in. Welcome, welcome. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. Had a great day today. It's hump days. So that's something, right? So come on in. We're going to go ahead and start. Um, TSEC is going ahead with the webinar today. So I hope you're ready. Hope you're as excited as I am to get started talking about poop. Yes. And as we go on, you'll see how important it is and what it does for our health things that we need to know and should know so we can apply it to our lives. Okay, so again, welcome. So we're going to start our webinar. We're entitling it Poop. There it is. I know it was corny, but I thought it was so cute and it's something you would remember, right? But I loved it. The importance of bowel health. So we're going to go ahead and just get into it. All right. In a minute, we're going to get into it in a minute. So you guys come on in, got a couple of seconds. So go ahead and get yourself together. What I need to do. Okay. All right. So let's talk about why are we even coming and talking about who? Why are we discussing this? So I'm going to tell you, you'll see. Bowel movements are actually one of the best indicators of your overall health. So when we eat, of course, we digest food. Our body takes in the nutrition that we need, but it needs to get rid of those leftovers, right? That aren't properly, properly absorbed. This cycle is what keeps the body function properly and effectively. So that has to happen. It's a process. So also... Research has shown that your brain and the good bacteria in your gut communicate directly. It influences your body, your, I'm sorry, your mood, your immune system, and the inflammation that goes on in your body. Also, re research has shown that stool consistency is strongly associated with the health of the gut, of, of the gut microbiome. And all that means is the good and bad bacteria that's living in your intestines, okay? So I know you. everybody goes to the bathroom. Everybody has to poop. Animals, fish, everybody poops, right? So what's actually in it? What's in our poop? And another name for poop is feces or stool. But for the purpose of this webinar, since my, the title is Poop, there it is, we'll be referring to it as poop. So our bowel, move, our bowel movements are typically made up of mostly water, about 75%. I know it doesn't look like that when it comes out, but it's 75% um, water. The remaining 25% is a stinky combination of the indigestible food matter, dead bacteria, cells, mucus, and bile. What bile is, it's a greenish fluid produced in the liver that helps digest fat. So we need that, but once it's gone, um, it's used to help the stool go through and it's eliminated with everything else. All right. Now, before we can talk about anything else, we got to talk about the players in this game. And I call them Poop Patrol because they are big players in um, the process of a bowel movement, right? So I don't know if you can see it well, but the rectum and anal canal anal sphincters, and hemorrhoids. There's some pictures of it so you can kind of see what's going on. So in order to, like I said, know what's happening in the body during our bowel movement and appreciate and respect the genius of our body, we have to first understand what's going on in the players. So several parts of the end of the gastrointestinal tract control bowel movements. We'll start with the rectum. So the rectum's job is to receive the stool from the colon. So the rectum sits at the end of the large intestines and it receives the stool. It also lets you know that there is stool to be pooped out and it holds the stool until pooping happens. So the rectum does a lot, kind of just hang, let the stool hang out there until it's told to let it go. 
All right, so when anything comes into the rectum, even gas, sensors send a message to the brain, and then the brain decides if the rectal contents can be released at that time. All right, so let's move on to the anus. The anus is at the very end of the rectum. It sits at the end, right? It's the very last thing. The anus is important because it allows control of stool, which means it keeps it from coming out when it's not supposed to. So the good thing about the anus is you can be walking around, and because of that anus, you don't just poop everywhere. It controls the stool in that way. So sphincters, they are part of the anus. They're circular muscles that are internal and external, and they control the movement of the stool. Right. So voluntary is the, the the sphincters are responsible for the way that you can clench and unclench your anus. Right. So you can kind of squeeze it and hold it um, or you can release. That is because because of those internal sphincters and the involuntary. That's when you have no control over your over your stool. And that's called incontinence. And then lastly is the hemorrhoids. I know. Everybody thought that hemorrhoids just kind of happened, you know, maybe something's going on. And I don't know, a lot of people think they burst the blood vessel, something's going on with their, you know, rectum. But hemorrhoids are actually a part of the poop patrol. They're actually part of it. We have hemorrhoids anyway. And they are made of blood vessels, connective tissue, and muscles. So during a bowel movement, your hemorrhoids swell. So they act kind of like a cushion. They swell with blood and become larger as stool passes from the body. Once the stool has passed, the tissue stops swelling and goes back to normal. So that's kind of what the hemorrhoids do. They're, they're the cushion for the poop. So you don't really, it, it, so it won't hurt when it goes through. All right, so let's do a quick quiz. We're gonna get into it, but before we do, it is quiz time. All right, let me see how much you've been listening. So can you guess what percentage of stool is made up of water? <laughs> Ray, you can't play. Oh. Um. <laughs> so I'll give you a minute. I know probably you all got it, right? I'm hoping you did, fingers crossed. But if not, the answer is D. 75% of your stool is made of water, OK? So yeah, I put a disclaimer in here. Why would I put a disclaimer? So let me just tell you, if you're squeamish about really getting down and dirty, talking about this poop thing, then this is the part where you might want to go grab a drink, take a bathroom break, and then catch back up with me because I'm going to be showing some pictures. Even though they're animated, some people may get a little squeamish about seeing stool. but the images of different textures of feces is very important to show so that you can understand the relevance to our health. So I have to do it. But I wanted to warn you first because some people are not able to, to do it, okay? So now normal. When we talk about a normal poop, what do, we, what do we mean? What does that even mean to have a normal poop? We often don't realize what's not normal until we know what normal is, right? That's pretty much in everything. We have to know what's not normal so we can recognize the normal. This is the Bristol stool chart, okay? This was a chart developed um, to help patients kind of describe what kind of poop they're having. So it lists the different kinds of poop that, that that can happen, either with diarrhea, constipation, whatever is going on, at least it gives the patients an idea to say, hey, yeah, I'm experiencing number one, or I'm experiencing number five. So they don't have to really describe it. They can kind of just look at it and point. So it's a really good tool to have. Also, let me go back right quick. I'm sorry. Talk about what normal is. I want you guys to know in general, you're considered to be normal or regular if you have a bowel movement anywhere from one to three times a day or even three times a week. So anything kind of less than that is a little bit, just watch it, it's a little bit abnormal. Because And you should go to the bathroom typically within 
30 minutes of eating. Some people wait longer or they feel the sensation longer. That's okay too. Typically 30 minutes, okay? I just want to put that out there. In addition to using this Bristol stew chart or what I call the poop chart, your doctor may also ask you how often you have a bowel movement. That's important to know. They may also ask you about how much stew you pass, the smell and the color which is why it's important to look back at it. So when you're using the bathroom, you have a, a bowel movement. A lot of us, we don't even want to be bothered with it. I mean, whatever's down there is down there is being flushed. I don't want no part. And I understand that, but it's very important to look back at it so you can see what's going on and see if everything is normal the way it should be. Okay. Okay. Question. Yes. On that Bristol chart. Which one of those are normal? Well, we're going to get into that. You, okay. You, you, that is our next slide. Okay. <laughs> That's my nephew testing me. But we're going to get into it right now because I want you guys to understand what this chart signifies and what it means. Okay. Um, let's stay right here for a minute. Okay. So I told you that this is a diagnostic tool that evaluates human feces based on the shape and consistency. So it's easier to explain to your medical provider. So type one and two, right? That is considered constipation, hard to pass, feelings of incomplete bowel movements, bloating and abdominal pain. If you're having type in one, type one and type two consistently, regularly, that should not be happening. And you might need to want to talk to your provider. He'll give you um, some clues on what to do, maybe change your diet. Um, and if, if it's more serious than that, then he will talk to you about other things. Okay. So typically type three and type four are normal. Okay. <clears throat> that is considered ideal stool. So it's, if it's like a sausage, but with cracks on the surface or like a sausage or snake smooth and soft, both of those are normal. Consider ideal stool. All right. Type five. That's the soft blobs with clear cut edges. Those pass easily, but can also indicate some, a little bit of diarrhea as well. But usually this type of stool is consistent with lack of fiber. So you probably need to just add a little more bulk to your diet, okay? Type six and seven, definitely diarrhea, okay? Fluffy pieces with ragged edges, a mushy stool is type six. Watery with no solid pieces at all, entirely liquid that is also diarrhea okay that's feelings of urgency or the our continence issue so if you have a problem holding it um because it's so liquidy you have that urge to poop or if it's prolonged that it can lead if you if it's been happening for a while that can lead to dehydration and malnutrition so these are the reasons why you want to look back at it so you can know what's going on with your stool okay we got a question. Yes. Um, is this chart available or is it only for health professionals? No, it's available. Very good question. It is available. Type in Google Bristol's Bristol stool chart. So many charts will come up. It's available um, for your convenience. It's also some really cute animated ones. Um, I use this one because it's a little more of what um, I want you to get an idea of what it looks like instead of the little poop with the eyes, which is cool, but <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. But I just want you to get a more realistic view. But yes, to answer that question, it is available to everyone. I'm not sure if your doctor or the doctor's office will have it ready, readily available. I'm not real sure. But here at Tyson Storehouse, we believe in, in you know, guarding, arming yourself with the knowledge that you need. So Google it and it's right there for you. OK. So good bowel function. What do we mean when we talk about good? Bowel? How do I know when I'm sitting down to poop that I'm having good bowel function? So these are little four things that you should remember. OK. You should be able to hold on for a short time after you feel that first urge to go. So if I'm sitting watching TV and it's a good movie on and I feel it, I, I feel like I need to go, but I really want to see this next part. 
I should be able to hold it and be okay before I have to actually go, okay? You should be able to pass a bowel movement within about a minute of sitting down on the toilet. So if you're sitting there, understand some of us look at our phones, some of us read the paper, that's old school. Some of us do all of that stuff and that's fine. But you need to be paying attention if you're, if you're not passing that bowel, those bowels within a minute of sitting down. If you have a BM easily and without pain, that's a sign of good bowel function. You shouldn't be straining or struggling to pass stool. That is not a good sign. And you should be able to completely empty your bowel and don't have to return to the toilet soon after to pass more. So if I do go to the bathroom and I have a bowel movement, I should make sure I feel relieved and that nothing else needs to come out, okay? That's another sign of good bowel function. All right, remember that. I'm not going right. Sorry. That's okay. So these are all things that really, really simple things, really um, easy things to remember, but things that you probably never even really thought about. So that's why it's important to, to talk about it, right? All right. Now, what's abnormal? What should I look for? We already talked about what's normal. Let's talk about what's abnormal. Black or tarry stools, blood in the stool, red or maroon stools, green stools, and uh, pale or clay colored stools. We're going to talk about this. I, in my nursing profession, I, I haven't seen a lot of red or maroon stools. I'm sure it happens, um, but I have seen the rest. Okay, so let's talk about what we're talking about with, with these. I'm sorry. So blood in the stool is, is never normal and could be a result of several conditions that range from mild, such as hemorrhoids, to serious, such as infection or colon cancer. Now, before you panic, because I don't want you to panic in, in this webinar, I want you to listen to me and get the knowledge that you need. Now, I don't mean occasional streaks of blood in the stool, which is normally not serious. That could come from constipation and straining. Also eating certain foods and certain medications could cause mild blood in the stool. Also mild streaks of blood in the stool should not be consistent and it should not fill the bowl with blood. Those things are happening. You definitely need to get with your provider, make an appointment so you can see what's going on, okay? Now, quickly, let's talk about these stools. Black or tarry stools with a bowel odor could be the result of eating certain foods, taking um, iron supplements, or possibly from internal bleeding high up in the gastrointestinal tract. So when we see dark uh, black or tarry stools, that kind of tells us that there's that's old blood and it's probably bleeding from, it's bleeding from at the top and by the time it reaches down, it's, it's old and it has turned the stool black or tarry. OK. Red or maroon stools could be caused by eating red colored foods such as beets or by medical conditions such as hemorrhoids, diverticular bleeding, colon cancer or inflammatory bowel disease. Green stools may be caused by green or artificially colored stool um, foods, I'm sorry, iron supplements, or it can be decreased colonic transit time. That means taking a long time to get through. So of course, everybody should know that you have intestines large and small and it has to go through all of that. If you have a slow transit time, sometimes it can turn stools colors. Pale or clay color stools could be the result of lack of bowel salt, which gives stool a brownish color. That's what makes your stool brown. But if it's a lack of that, it will be pale colored. Antacid, barium from an uh, enema, that's a chemical from an enema test. It could also do that as well. But what could also turn your uh, stool clay color is hepatitis. So I showed you kind of the normal, regular things that can turn your stool and medical things that could happen as well, because I want you to understand why it's important to talk to your medical provider, okay, about everything. Yes, you could have eaten beets and your stool is red. 
And, but if that happens over time, you want to not just pass that off as beats. You want to talk to your provider, okay? Should I share poop stories with my doc? I just said that. Yes, you should. Absolutely. Please share. Talk to your doctor about these things. It is so, so, so important. Question. Mm -hmm. I know you said that over time, but what is a good estimate of that? So I'm doing beats in my smoothies. So yes, it's going to be red. Mm -hmm. I'm stopped and now it's red. Is it after three days? Or I would give it two to three days that if you stop eating beets and your, you know, give your give that uh, colon, your intestines time to empty and do all of that stuff. I would say two to three days to wait for that to pass. If it's still happening after that time um, and it will also look different. So if it's truly blood in your <laughs> if it's truly blood in your stool and it's not from beets after you stop eating beets the blood will be more it will be it you, you will just be able to know the difference it won't be a maroon color it will actually be blood and you'll be able to tell and you know your body right you should know your body um if you don't get to know your body um and know what's normal for you and what's abnormal for you as well okay but i would say two to three days okay so why oh wait No, I got it. Okay. Yes. So share with your doc. Why is it important to share with your doctor? Bowel health is an important part of your overall health. We've already said that, right? A digestive problem is easier to deal with if it's caught early rather than letting it go until it becomes more difficult to treat. You may need to be referred to a gastroenterologist or other specialist if necessary to further assess your symptoms. So you wanna do that. You wanna to talk to your doctor about everything because they need to know because if you need to be referred out, they're the ones that can do that, okay? So that's why that's important. Um, I can't, <laughs> sorry guys, coming. All right, let's talk about a few reasons why we had bowel changes in the first place. Yeah, I know you're probably saying I'm 30, I'm 22, I'm 38, 42, whatever it is, you feel like, you know what, why am I having any bowel changes to begin with? I eat, I should just poop. But there are reasons that your bowel changes for whatever your age. It could be diet, stress, travel, dehydration, medication, age-related changes. Activity levels and exercise could also do it. Illness, such as food poisoning or gastroenteritis. Hormone related changes. So if you're going through the change as a woman, um, things can happen. Even when you're on your, on your period as a young girl, you know, if you notice, you poop more. So all, the things, all of these things could contribute to bowel changes. Or it could be more serious conditions such as inflammatory bowel disease or colon cancer, right? Our bodies are pretty sensitive to changes in our lives. That's why it's important to monitor them in your monitor changes in your stool so that you can inform your medical provider. Okay. Got a question. Yes. Does breastfeeding cause bowel changes? I have not heard that. I honestly don't work with um, in that area. That is not that is not my area. And I also haven't really even heard it. Um, but I can find out, I can do some research and dig, um, but I have not heard that. I really haven't. And I breastfed, um, from my own experiences, I don't remember having problems uh, or changes with my bowel, but you know, I, it says here's hormone related changes. So I, I, I don't see why that wouldn't be up there, um, to, to affect that as well. So maybe so I'm not sure. Um, so, while there are several disorders and diseases associated with bowel issues, I chose to discuss the most common, which is IBS, 
and also the one that was made famous by a few celebrity, celebrities in the last year or so, colon cancer. So that's why I decided to talk about these two. There are several others we can talk about, of course, for the sake of time, we won't, but I would just touch on these two for those reasons, okay? Irritable bowel syndrome is a common disorder that affects the large intestines. It affects all ages, even children. More, it's more common in women. IBS, IBS affects between 25 and 45 million people in the US. The exact cause is not known and there is no cure. Okay. Many people have digestive troubles once in a while, but irritable bowel syndrome is different. What sets it apart is belly pain, diarrhea, or constipation that comes back again and again. So it's consistent back and forth. Um, you can either have IBSD, which is just basically diarrhea. I, and I need to put this in here. Um, IBSC, which is just basically that constant constipation, or IBSM, which is IBS mixed, and you'll have both of those uh, back and forth. Okay, but there are no signs of, with IBS, there are no signs of damage in the GI system, and it doesn't make you more likely to have cancer or to get colon cancer. Okay. IB symptoms and poop. So for the, so since the topic today is poop, I will not really go into a lot of these disease processes because I'll be talking about poop because that's what we're talking about, bowel health really not talking about IBS or colon cancer. So I won't be going really in depth in those areas. I'll be just talking about the poop associated with it, okay? So IBS stool can vacillate from diarrhea to constipation, mostly due to contractions within the lining of the intestines. So they're thinking that IBS, people who have IBS have spasm within the lining that makes it, it contracts and, and releases, so it makes it have that diarrhea, constipation type battle, okay? The poop with IBS could be filled with mucus. It could be thin and pencil-like. It could be hard, lumpy, difficult to pass, or soft, loose, and watery, okay? They also might have a feeling of com incomplete bowel movements and abdominal pain and bloating, of course, is common, okay? So I said earlier that the exact cause of IBS is not known, but possible causes are your genes, um, maybe infection, inflammation, um, communication between your brain and your digestive tract could be off, and that could be making those spasms happen. Early life stress and past trauma, they're thinking with children when they um, have IBS that is coming from um, some early life stresses or, or trauma. Also, changes in your gut bacteria are a possible cause as to why IBS, IBS happens. Okay. Um, so, treating and managing IBS quickly. The symptoms we've already talked about on the left side of the slide. Treatment is uh, relaxation, diet, medications, exercises, some things. Um, and, and the thing with IBS is very situational, is very um, relative to that patient. Um, what works for somebody with IBS may not work with the next person with IBS. So, but they do know, research has shown that lactose, gluten, fast food, and alcohol are triggers for most patients with IBS. So that is something you want to avoid, okay? All right, time for a quiz. Quiz time. Now I'm gonna make you think all the way back to the, almost the beginning. According to the Bristol stool chart, which type, types of stool is considered normal? <laughs> Thank you. He does everything. He's IT, the music. <laughs> Your song long. <laughs> All 
<laughs> any guesses? Any guess? I, I know you got it right. I am so convinced that you have it right. The answer is C, right? Remember when we looked at the, the types, it was seven types. One and two were constipation. Three and four were normal. Five, six, and seven were diarrhea. Okay? I know you got it right. All right. We got people that got it right. Good. Colon cancer. So we just touch a little bit on this. This is just a, some of the celebrities that have died from colon cancer. I think when Chadwick died, it kind of put it on the map for everybody. Um, it was so he so he was so young um, when it happened. But then you know we start knowing about other celebrities as well that died fairly young. But the the celebrities I have here were not that young, but the two African Americans outside of Eartha Kid were very young when they passed. And then and they're noticing that research is showing that the cases are increasing in the ages from 20 to 49. This is why the um, American Cancer Society has dropped that screening age from 50 to 45. Okay, because of this reason. All right, colon cancer is the third most common cancer diagnosed in both men and women. However, remember that with on-time screening and timely evaluation of symptoms, colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and beatable. So I don't want you to walk away thinking that, you know, these people passed from it. Now I'm doomed because I'm, you know, having these things going on, the key is recognizing what's going on, knowing your body, recognizing changes and talking to your provider. That is the key, okay? Early signs of colon cancer, blood in your stool, that's a big one. Low hemoglobin count, that means low blood levels, loss of weight unexpectedly, abdominal pain, changes in your bowel pattern. Also weakness and fatigue. So if you're having a lot, you know, you wake up and you're fine, but then you just get so tired throughout the day, you haven't really done anything, you're fatigued, you're weak, you can't really do much. Um, and along with these symptoms, definitely um, talk to your physician and let them know what's going on. So poop with colon cancer, you'll see thin stools. Um, we already talked about consistency change that how often you go, sometimes you'll go all the time and then sometimes you won't go at all. Um, bloody stools, that is a key, one of the um, main factors in colon cancer. And like I said, remember, not normal, just little strips of blood. This is bloody stool, you will know. Constipation and tenesmus. Tenesmus is the feeling of the urge to poop, but nothing happens. So you feel like you really gotta go, you really gotta go, and then you go to the bathroom nothing things if that is happening over time um along with like i said everything else definitely talk to your provider let them know what's going on okay the most important takeaway that i want to talk to you about is getting screened okay if you don't hear anything else i say today make sure you get screened um colon cancer is preventable so make sure you're watching for any abnormalities and talk to your doctor. Colon cancer does not have to be a death sentence. It's all on you. It's on us, it's on me it's to make sure that we know our bodies enough to know what's not right, okay? So screening guidelines, the USPSTF, that's the United States Preventive Services Task Force, recommends the screening at age 50, but that has been modified given the increase in cases, like I was saying earlier, especially in African-Americans. There are several ways to be screened for colon cancer. There's a colonoscopy, CT scan, or a stool test, okay? So there are several ways. Talk to your doctor, your provider, about what method fits you and fits your medical situation, okay? I, I'm not gonna tell you which one to do or which one is, is likely what you talk with your provider and you guys discuss what's the best route for you, okay? So wrapping it up, takeaways, things that I really, really want you to remember. I need you to remember your poop and you, 
okay? Personal poop assessment. Let's say that fast three times, right? Personal poop assessment. You, <laughs> you want to talk about, you want to think about how often am I pooping? Um, am I pushing too hard? What does my poop look like? Am I getting it all out? Those are four things you really want to key in on when you're, um, you know, monitoring your bowel movements and your uh, change, especially if you're having consistency changes, diarrhea, constipation, feel like I got to poop, but I can't. If you're having things like that, you want to make sure you're monitoring these things. Okay. All right. Yes. We got a couple of questions that came in. Um, Marsha asked, is a senior, uh, as a senior, is there anything I need to do for good bowel health? Um, diet, make sure you're getting plenty, <laughs> make sure you're getting plenty of fiber, um, plenty of water, um, moving. That bowel movements are called that for a reason. They they move they move through our system, but when we move, it helps them move. So exercise and getting out there, moving, walking, that will get your bowels going. As seniors, yes, um, things slow down as you get up. So you do want to you know start focusing on your making sure you get lots of fiber in your diet, drinking lots of water, moving, um, things like that. I will tell you. Um, I'm not promoting this, I've never used it, but everything I've been researching, everything keeps coming up about the, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's the stool that you, the squatty potty. Squatty I think. potty. <laughs> Lots of things are coming up about the squatty potty. I'm, I might have to get it. Um, so yeah, so that might be something you look into as you get older, just kind of facilitate the movement of the bowel. They say it really works. Um, not promoting it, just saying it might be worth a try. Um, <laughs> the next question, um, it ain't really worked for me. The squatty product ain't really worked for me. But, oh, okay. You know, you know, I, my wife made me get rid of mine. But <laughs> the next question, uh, colon cancer, is it more prominent in men or women? Both men and women. So the research I did found that it is the third leading cancer of men and women. Combined. So I, I would, I'm taking it as you kind of see it across both genders. There's not more in women than it is in men. Um, yeah. So that's my answer for that. Any good? Open communication with your doctor. Now I had to put this, but y'all, it's funny. I had to put this picture in here. It's, it's a poop with a stethoscope on and and a, and a lab coat. That's hilarious to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was funny. That might grow some people out, <laughs> but it's funny to me. But anyway, open communication with your doctor. I also have another picture of the guy talking to the um, physician. He's talking about it, but you can tell he don't really want to. But it's something that we need to do, right? So, so important. All right. Talk to your doctor about everything. Let me say it. Everything. Talk to your doctor about everything. If you don't feel comfortable enough talking to your doctor, talk to your nurse. Tell somebody. They need to know everything that is going on with you in order to treat you correctly. They are skilled and knowledgeable, but they are not mind readers, guys. You have to tell them what's going on. It's like it's it's almost like you making a meal. Or you're telling your okay, your mom is keeping your, your kid, right? And you want your mom to make this meal for your child because your child likes the meal and you want her to have it. But you just tell your mom like the basic stuff. You don't tell her all the things that she will need to make it the meal that your child enjoys and that she will really get a benefit from. You can't leave stuff out, is my point. You have to tell your doctor everything. We've heard it all. Believe me, we do not judge you. We, we, we don't judge you. I promise you, we do not. <laughs> we just need to know so we know how to better treat you, okay? 
how to have that talk. So if you're kind of uncomfortable about having that talk, here's a little bit, some tips to help you get through it, okay? Be prepared to tell everything. Like I said, talk about color, smell, change in consistency. Don't be shy. Your doctor is not squeamish. They have heard all of this before, believe me, and they will know, well, should not judge you. If they judge you, you get another provider. Um, but we, we've heard and seen just about everything. It's our job, okay? Number two, add context. Get in depth. Yes, my, my poop was green last night, and this morning now it's got streaks of red in it. It's watery. Get, get in there. Get, get down and dirty. Let them know everything that's going on. Be specific. Remember, the goal is to get to the root of the problem. Let them know if your bowels keep you up at night, if you're, it's preventing you from eating well, if you're, um, it makes you feel ill a good part of the day. Those are things you want to make sure you tell them. Talk about your medical history, previous diagnosis, family histories of any stomach problems, recent labs, any over-the-counter medicines that you're using. That's important because a lot of us think we're just using roots and all this stuff. Oh, he don't need to know that. Yes, he does. We do need to know that. It can interact and interfere with some of the prescription meds that we give you. So it's very important. All right. Also report any weakness, fatigue, or loss of appetite. Discuss the do's and don'ts while awaiting a diagnosis. So ask your doctor, hey, okay, I know you tested my stool, but what should I be doing while I wait to come back for my next appointment? So you need to watch for... Um, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So you want to make sure you discuss triggers, things that you should avoid and things that you should add. Talk about over-the-counter meds. If you want to try a med that, that normally helps you with your stomach pain, ask them about it. See if that's okay to continue taking. Ask them what, what, what foods you should avoid so you won't get into um, another issue while you're waiting to see him back. So just like I said, just open conversation. And number five, review the signs to watch for. So you want to, like I said, watch for black stool or bright red stool, vomit with blood in it, bright red blood, or vomit that looks like um, coffee grounds that is um, consistent with old blood as well. Ab severe abdominal cramps, severe. Weakness, fatigue, or paleness, shortness of breath, dizziness, or fainting, and rapid pulse. Those are things you want to... Um, monitor for, okay? Before you um, keep going, um, I know we're talking about having the talk. Mm -hmm. Should we be alarmed if we're changing? A uh, question came in, should we be alarmed if our poop uh, is not consistent? Like one time it's a three, one time it's a four, it may go down to a six, seven, uh, thin, watery. Should we be alarmed or is that kind of normal? Mm, just remember, like I said earlier in the slide, remember that there are many fact uh, factors that can affect your bowel changes. Food, diet, exercise, medications, uh, recent um, illness. Our, our bowels are very sensitive to what's going on with us. So, if your stool is um, runny and watery and you know you had a burrito in five beers <coughs> that I'm just saying, I'm not judging because I'm not, <laughs> I do what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? I understand, but I'm just saying, don't be alarmed when kind of related to the things that's happening with you. Again, know your bodies, guys. It is so important because your body will talk to you. Just know that if you had that burrito and five beers and you had watery stool that night, that next day you may have it a little bit still. But just know that you shouldn't be having watery stools for five, six, seven days. That's abnormal when you're getting into that, coupled with the, the symptoms that we talked about, severe abdominal pain, um, fatigue, weakness, paleness, dizziness. Watch the signs. Know your body, okay? Um, that was it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on. So you want to be the master of your poop. You don't want your poop to master you. All right. How to poop like a champ. 
Oh, that was a funny picture too with me, the feeling of a successful food. Do you see that? <laughs> like he is so relieved right now. Yeah, that that's the look we want. Pooping like a champ? Pooping like a champ. So in order to poop like a champ, you want to drink water. You want to bump up the fiber in your diet. Fiber is your friend. It fluffs up your poop. Okay. Drinking water will keep things hydrated and moving, moving just fine through those uh, through those intestines. Okay. Eat probiotic foods. Those are foods with yogurt that has that good gut bacteria that we need, like yogurt and things like that. It makes your bowels happy. Limit caffeine. Caffeine is a bowel irritant. So if you're already having problems with your bowels, you don't want to go drink six cups of coffee. Okay, it's just going to irritate those bowels. I know it's hard, especially in these times we live in, but try to avoid stress. I know walking for me on the trail is, is really such a, it's been so beautiful. It's such a relief to get out and, and walk, whatever works for you, avoid stress if you can. Get exercise, exercise, get your blood flowing. There are blood vessels everywhere in your body, including your intestines. It gets those flowing and helps everything else move as well. Also elevate your feet. This is the what I was talking about with the, the um, <laughs> what is it again? Potty squat. Body, squatty potty. Squatty potty. If that works for you. Um, it's, it's, some people say it works great. Put your heels up. It can help with elimination. <laughs> So are we taking an ottoman or a chair? In yeah, there no, not a to kick our feet <laughs> I, up while we go on the tour. I'll need you to fold in like a scissor on the toilet. Please do not do that. But elevate your feet if that works. See if it works. Let me know. Please let me know. I would love to know if it works for you before I go get one. Okay. <laughs> also remember if you work your way through this checklist and you're still having problems, see your doctor. Can't stress that enough. And before you go, we're at the end. Thank you for hanging in with me. Before you go, I have to tell you about Tyson Storehouse Education Center. I have to. Natasha Tyson is our CEO of Tyson Storehouse Education Center. Here at the center, we believe in education. We believe in equipping our community with the knowledge that they need, which will in turn empower them. And we that is across the board. Please go visit the website. You'll see all of the wonderful things that Natasha is doing. I am so proud to be a part of it. Um, I'm over the Health Hub um, and the rest of the hubs. When you go to the, the website, you will see it's a Second Chance Hub, the Julia Best Hub. That's my mom, her grandmother. Um, I think I'm missing one. Second Chance. Second Chance. Education. Education. Check out the website. I put it, all the information here. Please, please, please follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, Tyson Storehouse 2018 and Health Hub TSEC, and on Facebook, Tyson Storehouse Education Center Incorporated. You will not be disappointed, guys. It is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful organization. Go to it. Reach out to me if you have any questions. I'll be happy to tell you about it. If you want to join us, if you want to know more about what we do and you want to talk to me, I will be happy to talk to you about it. You took mine anyway. All right. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I told you we we're going to have fun while we're talking about poop. So thank you so much for joining me. And you can't have it. And don't forget, look back at it. I had to. I had to. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much for joining me. Before we go, um, we had a few people say great tips. Uh, you offended some of the coffee drinkers out there <laughs> talking about no coffee. Limit. Limit, Limit. coffee when your bowels are irritated. irritated. Yes. And then um, you had a few people say that you really explain the IBS um, and they understood and they will definitely be uh, tuning in Wednesdays when you do this. Perfect. So um, a lot of love being shown Perfect. Um, out to you. You did a, a, a phenomenal job. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think I will keep when webinar Wednesdays. Web I like it. Webinar Wednesdays. I like it. I think I'm a, I'm a Wednesdays will be our webinar. I like it. And you know, if y'all like the, the assistant host 
just you know throw a shout out to <laughs> yes because I, <laughs> I won't get through it if I, if I let him, I won't get through it because he is hilarious. Thank you, Ray, as always. Thank you so much. So much. Thank you, guys. Bye.